All right, we are in Algebra 1. Today's date is the 26, 2 slash 26. All right, make sure that your name is on your paper. All right, so we haven't done math in a while. <laughs> so we're going to do some healthy review. What happens when we have one solution, zero solutions, and infinite number of solutions? So what does the graph look like when I have one solution? So they intersect at one spot, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I should do participation cards, like doom, choom, something like that. This is an intersection because they intersect here at one spot, so I have one solution. The number of solutions is how many times you intersect each other. This intersected once. All right, let's look at zero solutions. How do I have zero solutions? Do you guys remember this? Aha, gunner's on it. Parallel. So go ahead and draw some parallel lines. It doesn't matter where you draw them, like chunk and chunk. Parallel lines. And I'm going, going kind of fast, but if I want to be more formal about this, I should be adding arrows to the ends of all of these lines. So let's just get in the habit of doing those. It doesn't take too long. So zero solutions. These parallel lines, they kind of look a little bit not parallel, but these parallel lines, they will never touch each other. And since the definition of solution is where they touch each other, there are no solutions. There are zero solutions. All right, so I'm going to side from Gunner. Infinite number of solutions. How can you have infinite number? When they're on top of each other, when it's the same exact line, exactly. So thank you, Jose. So if I come back over here, let's do like a big line in blue, and then I'll change the color to red over here. Oh, actually, keep that line as blue. Stop. Okay, now new line in red right on top of it. See, this is where I need my keyboard. Okay, what if I draw a line and then move it on top of it by dragging it? There we go. That works. Whatever. So it's going to be the same line on top of each other. And if you, if it's unclear in your notes, because it's definitely unclear in my notes what's happening here, I'm going to say same line. And if you want to say, because you're really bad at drawing parallel lines like Mr. Sunnell, you can say that these are parallel. All right. Questions so far? So then we're moving on. So how does the algebra change? So the algebra, um, whenever you're doing something like uh, solving using um, elimination, solving using substitution, elimination and substitution were the two things that we've been working on this unit. Whenever you use those two methods to try, kind of combine those two equations, this is what happens with the algebra. When I get one solution, you'll have something like x equals 5 and y equals 3. We've seen that before. You do a lot of math, you get x equals 5, you substitute x equals 5 into the other equation, you solve, 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 and you get y equals 3. You'll get some final answer that looks like that. So after doing a ton of work, you'll get x equals 5, y equals 3. But if I have um, no solutions, you remember? What? Ooh, careful. You're right, yeah. So let's do what Gunnar said. When it's infinite solutions, it's the same number. So give me the same number, Gunnar. Like, Six is a six, yeah. So you get six equals six, or zero equals zero, or oh, I don't know what I'm doing there. Ah, oh, see, I need to somehow figure out how to do an undo key. As a sideways infinity, zero equals zero. What about this one? So what about when I have no solution, or yeah, no solutions, when they're parallel? What happens with the algebra? It's very similar to this, slight tweak on it. Very similar to six equals six. There it is, yeah, one equals two. Something that's impossible to happen. So 1 equals 2, or um, you can't have a variable, because the variables will actually be canceled out. 2 equals, three. 2 equals 3, yeah. Just anything that is clearly impossible. 2 equals 3. Those are all impossible. That means you have no solutions. All right. This is the key part that we use for the warm-up today, the slope. What do we know about the slope of things that have one intersection? Are they the same slope, or are they different slopes? Go ahead and look at those lines. Were those slopes the same or different? Different. Go ahead and write down. Different. And we don't actually care about the y-intercepts. So you can cross this off. You can say, don't care, um, whatever you want. I'm going to write here, don't care. I don't know how my brain is working today. 
I also realized that I need to be writing my D's with one D-O, don't care. One swoop. All right, or you could just cross it off. So over here, what do we know about these slopes? Go ahead and look at your graph because mine's off the, off the screen. These slopes, what do you notice about them? They're the same. What do we know about the slopes for infinite number of solutions on the far right? Slopes. Yes, same. But the key difference between same and same, between no solutions and infinite solutions, is their y-intercepts. That's the thing that's going to be the, or the difference. So which of these is different? Which of them is same? Let's talk about this one. When I had parallel lines, the y-intercepts were what? I'm going to go between Eder and Sergio. The y-intercepts for these graphs up here, were the y-intercepts the same or were they different? Different. There it is, different. Write it down. And then Sergio, same, yep. So now we have our table, and that refers exactly to what we did on the warm-up. So on the warm-up, we had this problem where we were asking about what, how many solutions, and we saw, okay, well, this had a slope of negative 6, this had a slope of 5. Those are different numbers. Negative 6 is different from 5. If it's different slopes, we come back to our notes, and we say, oh, the slopes, different, far left. Different means we're in the category of one solution, and we're immediately able to say the answer here is one solution. All right, so we're moving on. This is the harder version of it. How many solutions does this, does this system have? The general idea to solve these is change it to slope intercept form. Y equals MX plus B. So we'll write that down too. So our first step here is change. Uh, my handwriting, I'll get it better. Change. to y equals mx plus b form. That's the key. So let's do our first equation. If I hover over it and, OK, so I can actually point without writing. So how do I change this first equation to slope intercept form, to y equals mx plus b form? Well, I need to get y by itself. That's the general idea. How do I do that? What do I do first? I'm talking about this first equation. Yep, subtract 2x from both sides. I'm sorry, I did see your hand, Sergio. Um, so if I subtract 2x from both sides, so I say minus 2x, minus 2x, and I'm going to write that. Um, we'll just do it down here. So if I subtract 2x, these 2x's cancel out. I'm left with negative 4y is equal to, now I have a negative 2x on the right-hand side negative 2x, and I have a positive 12 also, so a positive 12, or plus 12. I'm really, really close already to y equals mx plus b form. I have a y, I have something x, and I have a b. I just, the only problem is I can't have any number in front of the y, so I need to get rid of it. How do I get rid of it? Gunner. Divide everything by negative 4, exactly. And I guess I should be switching the colors so we can see what steps we're going on. Yeah, so divide everything by negative 4. So divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4. And the negative 4 is canceled out. I'm left with just y is equal to, Sergio, you want to do the rest for us? <laughs> Careful here. So negative and negative makes it a positive. 2 divided by 4 simplifies to 1 half. 1 half, and I still have my x. You can put the x on the top like we had before, or you can just leave it on the side. It's the same thing. Top and the side are the same. And 12 divided by negative 4, careful, negative three. negative 3. Done. We have changed our first equation. This equation up here is now in slope-intercept form. 
Now we need to do the same thing with our second equation. Our second equation here, we need to change the slope-intercept form. What is my first step to get this guy into slope-intercept form? Again, right here. Minus 2y on both sides, OK? So minus 2y, minus 2y. And therefore, I have, we'll do it over here on the right-hand side. So I'm going to have x minus 2y, x minus 2y on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, those 2y's were canceled out, so I just have 8. So far, so good. What now? Minus x on both sides. x is canceled out. I now have negative 2y is equal to negative x plus 8. All right. So I'm going to side from Jose, last step, to get it into y equals mx plus b form. Sergio? Yep, divide by negative 2, everything. Everything divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. So the negative 2s right here will cancel out. I'll just be left with y is equal to, ooh, this is going to be hard. Sergio, you want to try it out? Negative x divided by negative 2. Go ahead and reduce that for me. Positive? Positive what? Positive x over 2, that's correct. So this thing right here is the same thing as positive x over 2. But the problem with that is a lot of students won't be able to see what fraction this really is. So this is really 1x over 2. Would you agree with that? So what fraction can I pull out and leave the x down here by itself? What fraction can I leave out here? 1 half, exactly. So this is going to be 1 half x. X over 2 is not incorrect. I just want to point that out. I'm just saying that this form is a little bit easier to see what the slope is. And then 8 divided by negative 2, Sergio? Negative 4. Well, now that we have it in slope-intercept form, we can actually use our notes from above. Our notes above said, oh, just look at the slope and the intercept. And because you know both those numbers now, you can tell which column you're in. So let's go ahead and analyze our slope and intercept here. First, let's look at the slopes. Are the slopes the same? Thumbs up, thumbs down. OK, so if the slopes are the same, that means in terms of our, oop, in terms of our table, we are with this column and this column. We're no longer in our left-hand column. So it's either no solutions or infinite solutions. Now we need to compare our y-intercept. Our y-intercepts were negative 3 and negative 4. Therefore, the answer is what? Quiet raised hand. Quiet raised hand. Gunner? No solutions. There it is. Write it, box it, we're done. You guys think you got the hang of it? Change it to y equals mx plus b form. Use the table. Find the answer. We have one more problem. Yep, just one more. Ooh. I noticed that my screen is slightly off for my recording screen, but that's OK. Yeah. All right, so I want everyone to try this on your own. Change it to slope-intercept form, and then check with the neighbor. All right, so everyone had the chance to work on this problem. From the two people that I saw that actually got an answer, you got the right answer. Everyone else that's working on it, you seem to be doing the correct work. So to get this into slope-intercept form, what am I going to do with my first equation? This equation up here. Do what to both sides? Plus 9x. And that leaves us with, that cancels out, with 3y is equal to 9x plus 27. Again, it doesn't matter if the 9x is on the left or the right, because you know that the number attached to the x is the slope. Then from there, I divide everything by 3. Yep. So divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3, and I get y is equal to 3x plus 9. Cool. From here, I need to go to my second equation. My second equation right here, and that is going to be turned into slope-intercept form by doing what to both sides? Quite raised hand. Sergio? Plus 3x. Plus 3x. Plus 3x. And I get, I should do it over here on the left-hand side so it's not confusing as if I'm working on this problem still. So now this is going to be y is equal to, that 3x cancels each other out, and I have 3x on the right-hand side and a plus 9. Whoa, look at that. It's the same exact equation. 
If it's the same equation, that means that we have the same line that we had from up here in our notes. It's the same line, which means it is infinite solutions. Go ahead and practice drawing that infinity symbol if you haven't done so already. The answer here is infinite solutions. Final answer, box it. All right, any questions? All right, go ahead and write your summaries, and then you can begin on Khan Academy.